Hey y'all, today I wanted to do a quick revisit of something I sort of threw out there in my MIDI system messages video about sending raw MIDI data from Max or from Pure Data. What we're doing here is we're just literally sending out the bytes, the status bytes and data bytes that MIDI messages consist of. Today, I'm going to work in Max, but this object that we're using in all this syntax is exactly the same in Pure Data. And what we're going to be using today is this MIDI out. The reason that I'm working in Max today is it's very easy for me to switch between different outputs that I have connected to my system. In Pure Data, you can do this, but you have to go through the preferences or you have to set some things up in advance. So just for the purpose of focusing on these raw MIDI messages, Max seems like a better tool for today. All right, so let's start by sending something out to my Yamaha TX81Z, old FM synthesizer. So right now I've just got this MIDI out. I've told it where I want to send things, and now I just need to send it a message. Okay, well, now I'm sending it raw MIDI data. So what does that mean? Well, it means I need to know the syntax of this message. So for example, if I want to send a note on message, I know that a note on message has a status byte that's 1001, followed by the channel. But this is going to introduce a new problem here, because to send these MIDI messages, we don't want to send things in binary, we want to send them in decimals. So you can see here this start a note enlisted in the help file is 144060. Okay, so we know that a note on message consists of three bytes, the status byte that conveys it's a note on message and the channel, a data byte that says which key, and then a data byte that says the velocity. Now, why is this 1001 translated to 144? Well, we can pull up this little binary to decimal computer and I can say, okay, what if I had 1001? That's my note on message, but again, that's just the first nibble, the first four bits. The second four bits would be the channel. Let's just say channel one, right? Zero, 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 zero. This is my channel one. If I convert that, hey, I get a decimal value of 144. So again, counting in binary, this eight digit number translates over to this, well, three digit decimal number. Just so we can see the range of this, zero, 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 zero. Is a zero? One, 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 one. One, 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 one. That's a complete byte of ones. 255. Does this make sense? Two to the eighth is 256. Yeah, that, that makes a whole bunch of sense. Okay, so let's send a raw MIDI message over to our friend here. So 144, note on on channel one. Note number, sure, well, let's stick with 60. And then let's do velocity of 100. Bink, bink, and let's hit it. Yay, our note is on. Hey, when is this going to end? Well, likely never. Unless we took this and we said, okay, well, what's a note off message? Well, let's hop back over to our converter here. And so 1000, that's a note off message. Channel 1, 128, okay? Ah. Oh. By the way, I also could have put just the note on with a velocity of zero. Keep in mind a note off message also contains a velocity. This isn't used by all synths on all patches, but the velocity that a key is released is part of that message. On. Off. You're probably used to using this make note to make notes go on and off which of course is a far better way to do it usually, but this has a duration built in. So it sends the note on message. And then after the duration, it sends the note off message. So this is neat that it's just doing it in real time. On, off. Okay, well, what if I wanted to send a pitch bend message? What's the syntax of a pitch bend message? Well, the status byte is 1110, again, channel 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. Bink, 224 is what we want there. So let's make a new one. 224. And then 
remember a pitch bend has a most significant bit and a least significant bit. Let's just mess around with this for a moment here. Let's do zero, zero. So now pitch bend, we gotta start our note first and then turn the pitch bend all the way to the bottom. Okay, that worked. 127, 127. Okay, that's not very interesting, but what if we did this? Uh, what in the middle there is gonna be 63. And then if I do dollar sign one here, it gets replaced by whatever's coming in. So then we can do something like a toggle that goes to a metro. And then this metro would trigger a random that chooses a number between zero and 127. Again, random chooses it between zero and one less than this number here. We send that to, uh, well, I mean, let's, maybe before we do anything else fancy, let's just do that. Bink, start it going. Make that faster. Right, and so now I have real-time randomized pitch bend. You know, if I want to get fancy, maybe I'd put a line in there, but maybe that's sufficient fun for that. Okay, that's neat, there's stuff going out there, but I wanna switch over and look a bit at my drum brute impact. And the reason for that is this drum brute impact has a built-in sequencer. And when we have a sequencer, we have different MIDI messages we can send. And some of these messages are just the status byte. So let's start by sending it a clock. And so 248, again, this is because the timing clock message is 1111, invert, 248, right? And so that single status byte, it has no data bytes. That single status byte is the entire message. So we can take this, think, now remember the timing clock goes 24 times per quarter note. So I want this metro to be relatively fast. So again, 24 times per quarter note, that means 24 times 24. That means a quarter note is gonna be 576. I don't know why I chose 24 for that metro. I could have just chosen 20 and made it easier, but that's fine. Okay, so let's send this clock out. In order to have this work, I need to set my drum brute to get its clock from USB. So that's the sync button here. I start it going. It's not doing anything because I haven't started up the drum brute yet. So I can hit player. And that embarrassing moment brought to you by the fact that I didn't go to my MIDI out and switch the output over the drum brute. Okay, ready, go. Ah, it's going, but I have it muted. I'm gonna unmute it. So this sequence, I'm gonna turn that down a hair. This sequence is all built into the drum brute, not built into the drum brute, but I, I created in the drum brute. So all I'm doing is sending it a clock. So, you know, if I were to decide I wanted to adjust this metro, I could do it here. So I could make that 204, right? Which is way slow. Or I could do something a little bit wilder, and I could randomize that metro. Uh, ooh, what, 48. Okay, so now every time the metronome clicks, it chooses a new random tempo. That's kind of excellent. Let's widen it up a bit.
okay, that's neat. You know, we could make our controls. This is my start now. Stop. And continue. That's not how you spell continue. Stop. Whoops. Edit. Oh, ha ha ha. I got those switched around. Stop. Continue. Continue will start at the middle of the pattern. Start will always restart at the beginning, regardless of where you stop. Okay, that drunken metro is really fun, but just for the purposes of getting things back to normal. Oh, I still have that random in there. Okay, be gone, random. Okay, we're back to normal here. Stop, continue, stop. Remember, with something that has sequences in it, we can do all sorts of things. We can mess with the song select. We can mess with all sorts of different parts of this. As a last step, let me make something that jumps around in the song position. I'm going to make a metro, set it to 2304. I did my math ahead of time here. So, you know, 2304 divided by 24. This means every 96 clicks of this metronome, this one clicks once, and we'll use this just so we can visualize it. Let's put a button there. And we'll use this to choose a random number between 0 and 127. And we'll do twice. And then we will pack it together. Pack. So again, this takes those two numbers, combines them into one thing. I think we're going to use the same trick we did with pitch bend. But this time, 242 is the song position pointer. And we're going to send it that first byte and that second byte. Song position pointer is a three byte message. It has the status byte, and then it has the most significant and least significant bit that combine tell us where in the sequence we're starting. So now, get this going, start it up. So every 96 clicks, so hold on, what's, what's 96 divided by 24 is, okay, so every four beats is gonna jump to a different part of the sequence. So we get this sort of stuttering beat there. I mean, we could uh, bring back our freaky metro as well. Random 100. So now Oh, <laughs> I plugged that random into the wrong place. That's why it suddenly got sad. Start. Or maybe this metro is the one that should randomize it. So now every four beats, the tempo is randomized and it's starting from a different place in the sequence. Pretty neat, huh?
And this is definitely <laughs> this is this is definitely something that would be hard to do if we weren't sending the raw MIDI data. Uh, again, note on note off, we note on note off, we might be better served by make note. Pitch bend, eh, there's a there's a max and PD object for that. But things like this, where we're messing with more unusual MIDI messages in the clock, this gives you a different level of control. All right, I'm gonna leave it there. Let me know what you come up with.